Greetings comrade, I'm Eremit and today on Spark Project we're checking out the GP4U, a Soviet civilian gas mask. Welcome to the video. The GP4U is a direct modification of the GP4 gas mask, based in turn on World War II era Mod 08 mask and similar pieces. It is the first mass produced gas mask of the Cold War used by the Soviet civil defense. Production began in 1955 and lasted until 1974, by which time it was replaced by more superior and modern GP5. GP4U stands for Civilian Gas Mask Model 4, with U for Improved. We're looking at the GP4U specifically because it is quite iconic in contrast to the disfavored predecessor. The gas mask is pretty well known and even appears in video games, second only to the above mentioned GP5, which, by the way, we have a video on. You can check it out through the recommendation. Like most Soviet NBC gear, these come in wooden crates, which have all the components to assemble full kits for, in this case, 40 people. The kit is composed of a face piece, a filter, a bag, and the unit of anti-fog. The GP4U is equipped with the M49 face piece, or mask model 1949. It is commonly made of thick green rubber and features a fixed corrugated connector tube that leads from the valve box to a thread which attaches to the filter. This look earned the gas mask a nickname, the Green Elephant. For that matter though, grey rubber was also used. It's equipped with a head harness of six straps and a rubber pad, the goggles are not unique to this face piece, they appear in many Soviet gas masks of the period. They're attached to the mask with fabric tape and metal rings. The inside slot for anti-fog common among many other gas masks is missing here, so therefore the anti-fog used with the GP4U is different. The valve box is composed of inhale and exhale valves. The inhale section leads from the tube and is protected from moisture by an elevation on the inside. The exhale section is double valved and is designed to remove moisture downwards. The valve box is attached to the mask with metal wire and tape. On the right side of the mask there are stamps with a press form number and the manufacturing date, second quadrant of 1958, making this mask a pretty early one. There are also side stamps on both sides of the mask. The M49 comes in three sizes, with this one being of third and the largest size. The mask evolved over time while retaining the same name, so features like tube design and the head harness design may actually vary. The gas mask is structured around the GP4U filtering absorbing box, or FPK. It is a vertical canister shaped filter in metal casing. They come in green or grey, just like the mask. A number of horizontal protrusions are present to protect from mechanical damage. The number of such protrusions varies from 6 to 8 on early and late filters respectively. The top of the filter has a metal cap and a gasket covering a Soviet standard 40mm thread. The bottom is sealed with a rubber plug attached by a string to prevent loss of the former. The inside layout is vertical and cylindrical, which is a prominent feature of Soviet gas masks of the early Cold War period. Such layout traits functional longevity and increased breathability for extra volume and weight. There are two main layers. The outer cylinder is made of paper fiber and is meant to stop aerosols and dust particles. The inner one is chemically active carbon. Manufacturing date and model markings are printed on the side, so 6 months of 1958 and GP4U respectively for this one. The GP4U kit is issued with a fabric gas mask bag equipped with an adjustable shoulder strap and a waist tie. The bag is closed by a single flap and button. There are no outer compartments or pockets. On the inside, however, the bag is divided into two sections for mask and filter, with a small pocket for anti fog in between. The smaller filter section, interestingly, has two wooden bars installed, and the bottom of it is to protect the airflow from being blocked by the cloth clogging the filter intake. The filter remains inside the bag when the gas mask is used, hence why the connector tube on the face piece. On the flap underside we find markings including factory emblems, acceptance stamps, and the production year, 1958. Originally the bag was dyed olive, but the color fades out over time under sunlight. As the mask is not fitted with slots for non-fogging film, a different kind of anti-fog is used, the so-called soap crayon. It is a tool compared to hard wax lipstick, applied on the goggles from the inside, usually in a pattern of a Roman numeral 3, and it is rubbed in with cloth. It is not easy to apply, but as long as it's applied properly, it is very long-lasting and effective. The crayon itself looks like so and comes in an interesting plastic recycled case. 
When issued for use, the gas mask is to be assembled into a personal kit with proper size and adjustments. The loadout is assembled by packing the FPK in the phase piece and the anti-fog into their respective compartments. The filter is kept closed and sealed when not used, and the waist tie can be tied up and tucked under the flap so that it doesn't get in the way. As with any Soviet gas mask, it is used in three positions according to the instruction on the use of personal protective equipment. The marching position, with everything packed in order, the ready position, with the bag open, waist strap tied and the gas mask connected to the filter, plugs removed and ready for use obviously, as well as the combat position, the mask is on the user while the FPK remains in the bag. Protection-wise, the GP4U shares the characteristics of most filtering gas masks of the period. The filter is not specialized for anything specific, it offers basic protection from a range of common CBRN threats related to weapons of mass destruction and possible industrial accidents including aerosol-based biological agents, poisoning gases, and airborne radioactive particles in adequate concentrations. It is meant to protect the respiratory system, eyes and face, but the hair is left open because of the mask type used. Overall, it's a pretty cool gas mask, still abundant on post-Soviet space and popular among Stalker and Metro fans. This is it for today, but as always, stick around and make sure to let us know what type of thing you'd like to see next. This video took a while to make because we're trying to improve the quality. Anyways, thanks for watching. Давай!